welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part two of my Inktober Mummy series. And as I've said before, I'm doing the weekly challenge, which means that you do one drawing a week. If you want to see the list of inks and things that you can use for Inktober, check out part one in this series. The app that I'm using is Infinite Painter for Android and here I'm just continuing my work on the mummy and as I said before do this part in pencil and get all your fine details and everything done um, really well before you try to do it with ink because otherwise it's very hard to erase and you can see here that I'm going back and erasing out the bandages and refining them and making them a, look a little bit smoother and I'm also changing the shape and <clears throat> I just want to make them look very ragged like they're coming unwrapped around his hand and so I'm doing this all on a separate layer in Infinite Painter and if you are doing this traditionally you might want to use um, tracing paper before you get your final image and so I'm doing this in um, the three different stages here it took me about three stages to get my drawing refined and if you just want to use one sheet of paper you can but um, you might not want to leave that much erase marks on your painting because if you do watercolor it'll show up now it might not matter if you're just going to use straight ink and you don't even want to use any colors and you just want to draw this painting black and white which is an option you can actually do that just fine and it will probably look really neat in black and white as well but here I'm using the Blackwell pencil and infinite painter and I'm just trying to work on the wrappings on the arm and I'm going back and sort of erasing through here and just trying to get uh, more of the bandage look and I'm using my reference photo that I made in Poser 6 for the, the mummy or not Poser 6 actually the um, the kit that I downloaded was actually made for Poser 6. You can go back and download content and some of it's from the past but it should work in Poser 11 which is what I have and so um, I went ahead and, and bought this skeleton and all the mummy trappings. I also bought a pirate one too which I might do for Inktober as well and I posed it in the way that I wanted and then I exported the picture out and I'm using it right now for my photo reference and so I'm just kind of checking to see how it looks here and I'll add the background on this other layer uh, in a minute and here I'm just kind of working on the pelvis of the skeleton now you don't have to do this um, with great detail on the bones because they're going to be wrapped and hidden by some of the bandages you just kind of want to give the idea that the bones are poking out of the bandages that some of the bandages are coming off because he's moving and he's walking and they're not supposed to do that and so it makes the bandages come off and they're really ragged looking and plus he's really old and so movement is going to make the bandages start to come off and so I'm just kind of working on that, getting that look and letting a little bit of the bones show through. And that's why I wanted a skeleton for this mummy because I wanted to show the bones poking through the bandages here. And so I'm just kind of working on the feet there and you can show the, a little bit of the skeletal toes sticking out there and, and just show it how the bandages are wrapped around the legs and the the bones for the knee are sort of poking out of the the bandages there so you show that a little bit but like I said it doesn't have to be a totally correct um, 
detailed view of the skeleton because you're not showing all the skeleton. You're showing um, just parts that poke out um, and the bandages there. And so I'm just kind of working on the feet there and I just kind of want to show a little bit of the toes but we also want to show it like it's got wrapping on it but as he walks the wrapping comes off and starts to get real ragged because he's moving and the bandages get scraped on the ground and we just kind of want to create the illusion of that and so I'm working again on the arm here just working on the bandages a little sort of darkening under the rib cage here because I want to show the rib cage poking through the bandages but I also want bandages hanging off the rib cage and then I'm working a little bit on the skull here just trying to get um, more of an idea of the bandages hanging off the skull but I do want the teeth and the eyes to show through to show that it's skeletal and working some more on the rib cage and and the bandages that are dangling off on it. Also the hands won't be totally wrapped. I'm letting some of the bony ends of the fingers show through. Now some mummies just have their hands totally wrapped and it kind of looks like mittens which is fine. I mean that's <clears throat> that's the way they show some of the the cartoon mummies but I just thought it would be kind of Oh, make more of an impact if you let some of the skeletal fingers show through the bandages. And then here I want to go ahead and draw the background on the third layer. And so I'm just going ahead and drawing some of the uh, rocky shapes of the wall. It's, it's a very rocky looking wall here. I also want to make the door of the crypt not look real straight because it needs to look like it's sort of chiseled out of rock there and so we don't want it to look real straight there and the wall is not straight either in the uh, photo reference and that looks good because we want to give the idea that this is a really old crypt that he's coming out of and we want to show all the rock texture if we can now it doesn't need to be in great detail. We'll mostly just suggest the rocks in the wall because otherwise it'll just overcome the picture with detail and the most detail that we want in this picture is going to be on the mummy because he's the center of our composition and <clears throat> he's the main subject. But you do kind of want to give a little bit of a indication of the rock texture in the wall and so I'm just kind of making little scribbles that are sort of rock shapes and kind of keep those horizontal because it's on the top of the wall there and we want it to look like it's going across and not vertical and then you would do more vertical strokes on the part of the wall that is next to the stairs there. So we're just kind of trying to give sort of some indications that it's a homemade, I guess you would call it, or handmade, or a really old made rock wall. And then I wanted to put a little bit of some uh, dead bushes on top of the tomb, and then also I want to put the moon in. So I'm just kind of drawing a crescent moon and I could use the circle tool and you could use a compass and things like that if you're following along traditionally. But I'm just kind of sketching it in because this is sort of an ink-like look anyway and so it doesn't have to be totally perfect with the, with the look of it because we kind of want it to look a little bit rough anyway um, for the Inktober look. So this is the end of my mummy series of part two and if you want to see part three hit the subscribe button. In part three I'm going to go ahead and start adding the color washes and do the final inking. So thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments down below and I will catch you later.